labor matrix and or what we refer to as smart labor pricing inside of our writer. So today's conversation is going to talk about, again, what we call either a labor matrix or smart labor pricing inside of our writer. We're going to spend most of our time over on the configuration side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch the configuration module. When we get into configuration, underneath configuration, I'm going to go down to labor. And the second option down says smart labor pricing. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my smart labor pricing window. We get my configuration screen for my labor matrix. Now, for those of you that have spent some time going through the webinars about smart pricing, you're going to notice that this one is a little bit of the opposite. What I mean by that is that graph at the top of the screen, typically with a parts matrix, the more expensive the part, the lesser the expected margin and or the lower the cost plus multiplier. A labor matrix or the concept of a labor matrix is different. Again, you'll notice it gradually increases from left to right. The concept of the labor matrix, as it was explained to me, was as follows. In, or I'm sorry, in, in automotive, you've got all kinds of parts that are on your shelf. So you go look at your shelf where your air filters sit, and you have actual boxes that you can touch. This is how many air filters I own. And oh, by the way, I want to make X margin on each of these air filters. So I have a predictable way to determine, well, here is what my income or what my revenue should look like. The concept is to almost look like labor in the same way. And what I mean by that is, if I said, well, I've got four technicians, each working 40 hours a week, that means I have 160 hours of labor to sell. So let's look at each of those in one hour increments as its own productive unit. Again, compare them to if I had a box or if I had a shelf full of labor that I could pick up, I've got 160 boxes of labor to sell. And I want to make sure that I am maximizing the profitability of each of those units of labor. So in as, so as we're building jobs, the, we want to make sure that we're getting a consistent margin or profit level on each of those labor items. As you go to do longer jobs, longer jobs tend to obviously be more expensive involve more expensive parts, which will then therefore generate a lower margin. The concept was I'll make more money doing 10 one-hour jobs than I will doing one 10-hour job. So in order to offset that loss in profitability, what we're going to do is we're going to use a labor matrix to gradually increase the labor rate that we're charging to the consumer as we're building the price of that job. So as we look at my screen here, you'll notice this is my default. You can have as many different labor matrices as you'd like, and you can assign them at either the category and or the operation level. But in my default, what I'm telling it, again, my labor rate is $85 an hour. So for any job that is from zero to 85, really it's up to one hour, I'm just charging my base labor charge. When I get to a three-hour job, I'm going to multiply that by 1.09, so essentially a 10% bump, somewhere there of 94.50 for a three hour job. At six hours, it's gonna be 1.15. At nine hours, 1.21. At 12 hours, 1,020 would be 1.27, and so on and so forth, 15. And then 18 hours, 1.33 and 1.39, respectfully. So essentially what we're saying is, well, what if I did a job that was four hours long? A four hour job, my base labor rate, of $85 would work out to be a $340 base charge. However, using a labor matrix, when I click on calculate, it tells me that, well, based upon the rules as I've got them established, it is 33% of the way from here to here. So 33% of the way from here to here would be 1.11, and therefore it would be 377.40 as my adjusted charge. Down to the lower left-hand corner, you'll notice global labor rounding options. If I wanted to, I could say do the math and then round. And again, we always round up. We do not round down. So not traditional rounding rules where we would say, okay, if it came up and it figured out that it should be $50.49, it won't round it down to 50. It will go up to 50.99 if that's the rounding parameter I've got set. If it was $50.01, it would also go up to 50. 99. It is always going to round up. So again, it doesn't follow traditional rounding rules as we go through. Now we've talked about this ability to use the labor calculator to determine what the price would be. So again, what I'm doing here really is a what if calculator. If I use this rule, what's the selling price to the consumer going to be? 
and then down here in the lower left hand corner where it says use smart labor pricing whether you turn this on or off it's a global setting i just checked that box and now smart labor pricing will apply if you look at it i've got my settings i've got my labor operations and i have my labor categories if you looked at it this is my default when i go to first set this up everything is going to be part of the default so it says unless you establish a specific rule the default is going to apply you'll get my labor operations and then also my labor categories what i can do is i could say well let's see i've got my default but it applies only to these categories these categories are excluded we don't actually take things out of the default what we do is we create a separate matrix and we add them in so for example if i said well, let's say i'd like to price my breaks at a little bit less aggressive of a markup as we go through so i'm going to tell the system i'd like to create a new one and i'm going to give it a name and the name is really only relevant so that when i come back in here to look i can see well that's what this one was specifically intended to do so i'll come in here and i'm going to say well let's see for breaks everything from zero to and what you have to do is you have to do the math what i mean by that is let's say i said everything from zero to three hours is going to be my base labor charge well three hours at 85 dollars an hour would work out to be 255 dollars so okay everything from there is going to be just straight at my base labor rate so a one times cost plus multiplier once i go from three to we'll say six hours so it's going to be 510 dollars i only want to bump it up to 1.03 so again a much lower increment at nine hours so in this case nine hours and work out to be 765 and at nine hours we're going to be at 1.06 and then as we continue on down well let's see what's 12 hours going to be that's 1020 and again we're using whatever is my base labor rate to calculate the charge and at that point we'll be at 1.09 and then i don't actually want to go any higher than 1.09 so all i'm going to do is just fill in 1.09 and it's going to just flat all the way out through to infinity so again a smaller markup and again what i have to then do is say well this should apply to my break category so I'm go to my labor categories i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add in breaks and then now from this point forward when i assign a job for breaks so i'm going to go ahead and click on save changes if i came in here I said, all right, I'm going to pick on my friend Pat Clark. I've got a couple of jobs that I've added to her ticket, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign a labor time to my AC compressor. It says I'm using smart labor pricing, and if I said, well, let's make that three hours, again, not three times 85 or 255, but 277.95. So it's applying my smart matrix. If I came into the break job, and I said, well, let's do the same three-hour job, again, We've got three hours, but because I told it to stay flat until you get to that three hour delta, it's still just that 255, that math or that multiplier. How about a six hour job? Well, again, 525.30, because now it's saying, well, that was a 1.03 times cost plus multiplier versus using my standard labor matrix, where a six hour job is now going to be 586.50. So, again, you can assign it at the category level you can also go one level deeper what i mean by that is you can notice i've got my categories and i have my labor operations the way that this works is when i create a matrix if i assign a labor category all of the labor jobs that fall underneath it are going to be in that labor matrix you don't have to assign the operations individually but if i said let's go ahead and let's create a break rotor matrix and so as we assign that we said well let's see for my brake rotors i just always want to be at 1.5 times my labor rate now again maybe it is or isn't applicable but if i said let's do everything where the labor charge calculates out to up to ten thousand dollars i'm probably not doing many jobs that are more than a hundred plus hours we're going to make it 1.5 times as a cost plus multiplier now if i did that what i have to do is tell it well these are the labor operations that this applies to so if I came down here into my break category or my break section, there's my fronts. And all I'm doing is I'm using shortcut keys, either control or shift, to go ahead and grab multiple different options at once. And I add those in and then click on save changes. 
So now essentially what I've said is, well, when I go ahead and I add this job onto the ticket to do the brake rotors, remove and replace, and I did even a one hour job, and let me go ahead and have it calc my, oops, calc my charge, I apologize. Um, now what it would do is it would go ahead and it would assign, now I gotta add, I gotta take this back off and add it back on again, but now it's going to assign because we've established its own matrix, it will go ahead and it will establish it for that. So if I clicked on labor and I added on my brake rotor job, again, we'll go ahead and we'll do just our front two. And then again, I've got a default time there, but if I told it, you know what, I want it to be one hour, what smart price will tell me is we're gonna use our brakes labor matrix. And again, I'm gonna go back and take a look. I think I probably have to close and reopen our writer in order to have that take effect. So back down to configuration that's under labor and then smart labor pricing. One last piece before I finish this morning's webinar, and that is if you went over and you looked at my smart matrix, you'll notice I've got one that also says maintenance smart labor. If you get into maintenance smart labor, you'll notice it's just a flat line at one. And you notice, again, all I'm basically telling it is for anything in these categories, again, you'll notice the categories that are included. So my factory scheduled maintenance, my filters, my flushes, don't use the labor matrix. So I wanted to apply to certain categories, but not others. So again, I can go ahead and I can create that matrix, just leave it at a flat line at just a one times cost plus multiplier. And then now it will only apply to certain. So even though I'm using smart labor pricing, doesn't mean I universally have to use it for all, you know, for all of my different categories. I can segregate or exclude certain ones to have it calculated a different markup or different percentage.